to law and order concerns in and around Joondalup. Central Park is home of the Joondalup War Memorial and is adjacent to the Joondalup Learning Precinct, directly opposite the Lakeside Joondalup Shopping Centre and a short walk to the Joondalup train station. The park is also flanked by apartments and businesses such as Hans Cafe. It is a beautiful park, combining manicured lawns, man-made creeks, gardens and native bushland. Its proximity to the Joondalup Education Precinct, Joondalup Council, shops and residences make it a popular attraction. Unfortunately, I have seen an increasing number of complaints being received by my office from concerned residents and business owners in relation to the activities of a particular group of youths, numbering between 20 to 30, and variously aged between what would seem to be young teens to young adults. This group habitually loiter in the park and cause a wide variety of criminal activity, most commonly in the afternoon. I have spoken to residents and business owners in relation to the activities of this group. Based on such feedback, examples of what this group get up to include chronic public drinking. Every concerned member of the public with whom I have spoken have attested to the fact that the group seems to always be drunk and drinking in public. By about 6pm on most nights, the group is that inebriated that some members of the group need to be physically assisted by their friends to make it back to the train station. In relation to that, anecdotal evidence suggests that this group is not actually from within Joondalup, but rather from the Clarkson and Butler region, travelling into the Joondalup centre by train. Feedback I have received would indicate that the group originally used to loiter around the Joondalup train station until cracked down upon by the transit guards. Subsequently, the group has now moved across to the road to Central Park and seemingly made it their preferred new home. I've heard that Lake, uh, Lake Joondla Baptist College students who live along Lakeside Drive detour through the Edith Cowan University campus to avoid this park, having been attacked and asked for their wallets and phones in the past. Recently, I was told about a Malaysian exchange student who slowed down whilst driving along Grand Boulevard to allow the group of youths to cross the road only to have his car's bonnet smashed upon, requiring him to quickly drive off to avoid any further damage or incident. Students living in the ECU student village report being chased by the group of youths through Central Park and the West Coast Institute of Training campus during nights out. The Wanneroo Joondalup RSL, of which I'm a proud member, has informed me that the war memorial itself was recently badly defaced with graffiti, including with lewd images of genitalia. Now, I'm sure that you don't need to be an ex-serviceman or woman to find such behaviour to go against the very grain of what we Australians find acceptable. A Tuesday and Thursday evening group fitness class for ladies has had regular run-ins with the youth over a long period of time, including having lewd and sexualised taunts yelled at them whilst they are exercising, urinating in front of the group, tampering with the park vehicles of attendees, setting fire to bushland surrounding the park on two occasions, committing public sex acts in front of the group. The group of youths have also been seen to conduct organised fights among themselves, which they video on their phones. Nearby businesses such as Hans Cafe have also suffered at the hands of these youths, including instances of the group harassing staff and patrons requesting free food and the theft of the tips jar and United Fundraiser charity box from their front counter. On most occasions now, Hans Cafe resorts to locking its front doors if they see the group approaching, hardly making patrons feel safe and comfortable inside. Minister, as you can imagine, these reports are highly concerning to me. Whilst Joondalup is a growing city, it has nonetheless enjoyed very low levels of crime. Whilst every expanding city experiences growing pains, the prevalence of issues being caused by this particular group of youths is giving the city centre an unnecessary bad reputation. Given the predictable nature of this group, I'm hoping that with your intervention, more can be done to stamp this behaviour out. I would hate to think that the group could be allowed to gain a stronghold in Joondalup. As such, I beseech the Minister to look into this situation and offer my community assistance. Naturally, as always, I would be delighted to host the Minister for a visit to the park and perhaps meet with residents of the area to discuss law and order issues with them. I thank the Minister for consideration. Well, the Minister for Police. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I do thank uh, the member for Joondalup for raising this grievance with me on a very important issue in your electorate and also for your continued uh, numerous representations on behalf of your constituents on, on law and order issues and road safety issues as well in your, in your electorate. Um, Anti-social behaviour in and around this Joondalup Central Business District has been an ongoing concern uh, over a period of time for both WA Police and the community. Um, 
uh, I think it's probably symptomatic of a growing population with Joondalup uh, becoming a large community hub. So there's issues that have been caused by a small collective of individuals who are gathering, as you've mentioned, in the public areas. Um, they, they're semi-regular, although you know intermittent. I think uh, as the pressure gets applied to them, they move away for a period of time and then they come back again. So the areas of most concern, you, you've raised them, but the areas that um, police have advised me are of concern are around the Joondalup train station, the adjoining Lakeside Shopping Centre and Central Park, as you've mentioned, that where the uh, War Memorial has been housed. Uh, the small group of individuals frequenting these areas are moving between uh, um, various different uh, places in, within the region. Um, some of those stakeholder groups that WA Police are li liaising with are the um, Public Transport Authority and also the Lakeside Security Service and, of course, the City of Joondalup as well. Despite efforts made to manage and police these individuals, um, they, they are, as you advise, continuing to congregate and move between these areas. And the antisocial behaviour that you've mentioned, and indeed some of it sounds like it's moving into uh, criminal offending in uh, many circumstances, and the intimidation of members of the public in these areas is of great concern to us. The issues and behaviours, um, unfortunately, are occurring at times when the demand on police services is very high. You know, it's often on those uh, weekend evenings when resources are often directed to uh, matters of higher priority. Um, but that's not to say that police aren't prioritising um, trying to uh, have an impact on the behaviour of these people that are causing so much concern to your local constituency. We have been targeting this area with um, targeted police actions. We use the regional operations group, the dog squad, we've had the mounted section out there. They've also been subject to regular foot patrols, which the Joondalup police have introduced on Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights. And I believe that that's been well received by the business community in the precinct. And I'm advised that there was a stakeholder meeting um, held on Monday the 17th of March at the city of Joondalup and um, Mayor Troy Pickard uh, has been in contact with me with respect to that stakeholder meeting as well. Um, I'm advised that there was a discussion, acknowledgement and agreement amongst all of the stakeholders that these issues needed to be addressed and that we needed to have a collaborative approach using all of the resources of local government and state government in a collaborative effort to try and crack down on the antisocial behaviour. Um, WA Police have agreed to take a leadership role in focusing these efforts to address the local issues. I'm very pleased uh, that they have stepped into the space to try and um, put an end to this behaviour, if possible. We're in the process at the moment of formulating an operation to concentrate resources and direct effort of all of the stakeholders. And that um, focused effort is around identifying individuals and addressing the identified issues in the Joondalup Central Business District. More specifically, uh, police are also focused around the Joondalup train station, the Lakeside Shopping Centre and Central Park. The PTA, um, Public Transport Authority, have also stepped up and have appointed a new cleaning contractor. They, the new cleaning tender um, will commence at the Joondalup train station the week commencing 24th of March. So, uh, and, and there's also a consideration of enhancing the security presence at Joondalup train station. So, as I said, a collaborative effort from all of the stakeholders is probably what's going to work best in this situation. Lend lease have also agreed to focus on areas adjoining the train station with cleaning, general upkeep um, and further beautification of the parks and the grounds areas. And there's been further enhancement of CCTV capabilities. Uh, it, or that is being considered and a submission for funding currently being prepared by the City of Joondalup for this purpose. So today there will be a pre-arranged police operation by the Regional Operations Group, which will see the area subjected to very high visibility policing, uh, approximately 25 additional officers both day and afternoon shifts. Uh, this will be the first ongoing concentrated policing effort to address the issues associated in these areas. So I do thank you for raising um, this, this, is, this matter with me because you know, in, in liaising with police and um, speaking to police about the local effort that may be required to crack the back of these kinds of vexing issues, you know, it does enable them to then focus their effort and work, work out well, what is going to be the strategy that will best suit um, 
a solution that's acceptable to your constituents. And I think those 25 additional police officers will go a long way to addressing that in a targeted approach. The police will be working towards gathering evidence to um, progress some prohibitive behaviour orders against the individuals that have been uh, causing a lot of the, the problems there. And prohibitive behaviour orders we know work very well in breaking up groups uh, who engage in antisocial behaviour and antisocial activity. And by putting the PBO in place, you know, if, if the way that they can be used is we can effectively have half of the group with PBOs and half without. And in splitting the group, the, the activities of the group then become, they lose their focus and they go on to do different things. Or, but in any event, uh, the PBOs can prohibit them from the Joondalup precinct, which I think will give uh, some considerable relief to yeah. the constituents um, and the business owners in that area who've, who are finding this antisocial behaviour uh, are not only concerning, uh, it's impacting you know, the quality of life and the amenity of the area. So I do thank you for raising this issue with me. I'd be more than happy to come out and speak to the constituents and the, the, the residents in the area. Uh, I do in, always enjoy coming out to Joondalup and meeting your constituents. I find that they raise issues that are not only of concern just specifically to Joondalup, they, they're issues that, um, that help me as I get around the state as well in ensuring that we have the right policy approach to respond to these matters. Thank you, Minister. Speaker. Thank you.